So, welcome to this uh, lecture on programmable logic devices uh, in the course uh, digital system design with PLDs and FPGAs. Uh, we have completed our um, advanced digital design part. I have covered almost everything data path design, controller design, issues in the controller design, then um, some essential topics on synchronization, top down design everything is completed. VHDL uh, we have uh, as far as the synthesis is concerned we have completed um, everything pretty much. Um, what is remaining is maybe the test benches uh, we have to cover to write. Um, uh, the uh, test bench for simulation uh, we will do that and uh, two topics are left one is uh, programmable logic devices and field programmable gate arrays and we will next uh, few lectures we will complete try to complete the programmable logic devices or PLDs and I must uh, tell you that there are two types of devices in this uh, PLDs one is SPLDs and CPLDs. Uh, one is simple programmable logic devices and the second one is com complex programmable logic devices. SPLDs are very very rarely used but um, it is better for an academic interest to go through that part so that when it comes to the CPLD it is very easy to understand and also maybe that gives you a a little bit of how these devices are evolved maybe it is useful I mean I am not very sure about it. Uh, but CPLDs have some, some use at least not that is not as useful as um, uh, FPGAs because uh, nowadays um, the designs are very complex and people try to build lot of things into a single chip uh, to that extent CPLDs are not much use but they have do have a place um, in the case of low and medium complexity design and they have some advantages some disadvantages which we will see. So uh, let us start with the programmable logic devices. Um, so let us uh, look at the slides. So we are going to um, hold together uh, the programmable logic devices which are uh, called PLDs and as I said there are two part one is SPLD and CPLD. Uh, basic idea is uh, now um, when you look at the evolution this has started uh, this idea of the programmable logic devices has started uh, quite some time back maybe 25 to 30 years back. And there were I mean the, the VLSI circuit density was not much. Um, people needed some kind of programmable logic and earlier um, uh, designers used to work with discrete gates and discrete functions like multiplexers, demultiplexers, encoder, decoder. So when you had normally a logic design it was a printer circuit board full of small uh, integrated circuits okay which was not very complex you know you will have some gates you will have some multiplexers encoders decoders as we have uh, the design was pretty much same what we have seen but uh, it was implemented not in a single chip uh, plenty of chips it was huge number of chips okay. So you should uh, when we talk about the the evolution you should think of that scenario not today's scenario. So there was some need of programmable logic um, the, the first thing comes to mind is um, the chip select decoding in a microprocessor based design that means in a microprocessor you have lot of uh, memory and peripherals again in those days um, it was not a, a single chip there will be. Uh, multiple memory chips to cover the memory space, multiple peripherals all these need some kind of uh, uh, you know the memory map you know everything is mapped to the memory map of the processor and that is done by uh, the chip select decoding by the higher address bits um, uh, and that um, 
some kind of flexibility was required in kind of uh, mapping these devices into appropriate places depending on uh, the need ok. So, there was at least for a chip select decoding there was some kind of programmability was required. So, I think that was a kind of starting point of uh, this programmable logic. So, the only programmable element then um, available was a memories ok what is called programmable read only memories. So, that is a context. So, basically the idea uh, coming back to the slide the idea is how to use memory as some a programmable logic you know like you have standard memory how to use it as a programmable logic that was a basic idea. So, let us clear that part so that you have your kind of not lost in all the old technology because if I show a picture of one of the prom a kind of architecture then you will be wondering what is going on. So, let us treat this idea suppose um, we take a um, two uh, you know variables x and y and you want to implement this boolean function of x and y which is nothing but x x or y ok. So, um, do not confuse with this uh, these two x's uh, this is the variable this is a function and this is y ok. Now, idea is how to use a memory to implement this x x or y that is a basic idea and we take a, a two line two address line memory that means four location it has and that means we take a 4 into 1 memory and you know that there are 4 location and when address line is 0 0 uh, the 0th location is selected address line is 1 0 1 first 1 0 second and 1 1 third location ok. So, internally there is an address decoder depending on uh, the, the value you put here appropriate location is selected ok for writing or reading. Now, assume the truth table of x, x or y is programmed in this for location ok. So, basically um, x, x or y is uh, the function is either of the input is 1 then the output is 1. So, if both inputs are 0 uh, the that uh, value is 0, 0 1 that means uh, this is x bar y is 1, x y bar is 1 x y is 0 ok. So, what we are doing is that we are programming that um, the truth table into this 4 location because these are two address lines are connected to these variables ok and this is somehow programmed ok. We, we just write that truth table into these location. Now, you check what happens suppose we give 0 0 as the, as the input value. Now, uh, that writing is kind of part of the programming this memory with the truth table and when you want to uh, kind of use it as a logic what you do is that you put this memory in the read mode. So, I am not showing that I have assumed that it is written and this is already in the read mode ok. So, the logic box uh, when the memory is in the read mode when the memory is in the write mode we write the truth table ok. And and I have not shown the I am not showing the writing part which is which is understood. So, if you you give 0 0 to x and y then this 0th location 0 0 location is access and you get a 0 here. And if it is 0 1 uh, it, it, it access this location and then 1 comes on the data line. So, the data line is the output address line is the input and again you give 1 0 the 1 comes here 1 1 0 comes here. So, uh, basically you take a memory of the required capacity that means suppose you have a uh, you want to implement a 5 variable function then you take a memory with 5 address line or 32 locations into 1 bit 1 data line we require connect all the variables to the address line 5 variables to 5 address line. Uh, in whichever order does not matter, but then you have to appropriately program uh, the truth table ok. So, you program the truth table then use the data line as a boolean function the output of that uh, logic you know that is what is required. So, that is how we use the memory 
as as a uh, kind of programmable logic um, address lines are the inputs data line as the output this is while working as logic truth table is the content of course when you write the truth table um, into this memory then this data line is definitely the input okay is not the output okay but in operation when the logic is in operation address line is the input data line is the the output now um if you use a kind of static ram which is kind of volatile uh, each time you power up um, the locations are not defined okay uh, we don't know what is the content of the location it could be 0 or 1 because these are kind of uh, you know the latches inside sram cells are nothing but kind of cross coupled latches which will come up with some random values so uh, you have to write so you cannot use uh, sram as a programmable logic you can use but you have to write it each time but so if you again once again go back to the old scenario that was not kind of uh, possible and um, so some kind of non volatility was required that means you program it uh, once once for all maybe uh, but then it should retain this truth table inside okay so such a device was available then that is called programmable uh, read only memories or called prom okay so the architecture of the prom was like this and we are showing now exactly similar one that means four locations two address line instead of one data bit i am showing two data bit that's the only difference so this was the architecture of the uh, the prom or programmable read only memory okay so that is that is called programmable read only memory that means you can once you program it um, you can re only read it you cannot write it so you can say it's a uh, write once and read many time uh, memory or something like that so you have here a four location memory with two bits output and if you see there are two address line a1 and a0 a1 and this is a complement of that a0 complement of that and this part is the address decoder so this line when both are 0 0 a1 bar a0 bar this AND gate is 1 this is a1 bar and a0 this is 1 so it chooses these are the min terms and a1 uh, sorry um, a1 a0 bar a1 a0 so these four AND gates are the four locations okay now take one data line and there are connections okay like there are there is a diode and a fuse and this is a normal fuse which can be blown uh, by passing a larger current okay so there are four connections through diode and we will see why the diode is required i mean this is we are discussing the um, the the old architecture and this data line is pulled down to the ground with through a resistance and this is the output okay if you need a buffer you can imagine a buffer here uh, and similarly a, any number of output can be there which allows you to implement multiple uh, outputs okay now assume uh, you want to program your um, xor function that means 0 1 1 0 okay now um, what you do is that um, you blow the fuse we will see how to blow the fuse you just blow this fuse retain this connection retain this connection and blow the fuse okay so it is equal to programming 0 1 1 0 exactly like uh, here 0 1 1 0 because we are trying to implement um, the XOR of the input okay so uh, here we have two inputs you can assume it is x and y now uh, like if you program 0 1 1 0 you see what happens you give uh, 0 0 here then this AND gate is 1 and rest all is 0 okay uh, so the, the moment it is 0 this these diodes won't conduct okay and this is 1 
but see you see that this fuse is blown ok. So, this there is no conduction here and it is pulled down you get a 0. So, but if it is kind of uh, 0 1 uh, then this AND gate output is 1 rest as 0. So, since this is 1 and this is pulled low this diode will conduct the fuse is retained. So, you get a 1. Similarly, when you have 1 0 this diode will conduct the fuse is intact and you get a 1 and when it is 1 1 this is active rest all are 0, but this fuse is blown. So, it will not conduct it is pulled low and then you get this ok. So, you can say that um, uh, this is acting like a programmable OR ok. So, we are programming the OR function um, you can imagine this as an AND and an OR ok. So, this is a fixed AND you have uh, 2 inputs. So, you have 2 raised to 2 mean terms a 1 bar a 0 bar a 1 bar a 0 a 1 a 0 bar and a 1 a 0 all the min terms are there. So, suppose you have n inputs then, then you can imagine there will be 2 n vertical lines n inputs and their complements and there will be 2 raised to n AND gates here each AND gate will have n inputs ok because you need to choose uh, an input or its complement. So, for an n input case there will be 2 n vertical lines representing n inputs and its complement and there will be 2 raised to n AND gates representing all the bin terms and there are each AND gate there will be n inputs um, selecting uh, the appropriate min term ok. Now, you program the truth table by blowing uh, the fuse ok. Now, uh, the next before we see how to blow the fuse what is the purpose of this diode ok. You might be wondering why a diode is required because it is definitely not uh, not to do anything to do with the 0 because uh, when you want to program a 0 you blow the fuse there is no connection at all. So, it is something to do with um, the, the connections you are retaining. So, in the case of XOR gate we have programmed 0, 1, 1 and 0 that means these 2 fuses are blown they are not there these 2 are retained ok. Assume the input is 1 0 ok. When the input is 1 0 the AND gate this AND gate is, is high 1 and this AND gate is low 0. Suppose there is no diode there is a direct connection then you can imagine that what happens then there is a direct connection through the fuse one output is 1 other output is 0. So, there will be a short circuit uh, directly from the VCC to ground the VCC of this uh, through the, the, the PMOS or uh, then maybe earlier it was uh, kind of BJT's uh, use, but does not matter but then there will be a from the VCC it is it is coming through that and it goes to the ground through the, the transistor pulling low. So, there is a short circuit. So, this diode you know kind of block that uh, zeros so that there is no direct conduction between the VCC and the ground. So, if this is kind of 1 0 then this is 1 this and this since it is pull low this diode will conduct the 1 reaches here, but uh, since uh, uh, this is a reverse bias uh, you know this diode is this 1 is here and the 1 is here it is reverse bias you need to have at least 0 0.7 volt difference being identical gates that cannot happen and um, so the this will not conduct this will not create short circuit that is the idea of uh, the, the diode. So, as I said the programmable read only memory is is a kind of fixed AND and a programmable OR ok. Now, how to blow the fuse um, it is enough if you you know like if the current rating is say 20 milliampere uh, you draw larger current maybe the 30 milliampere or 40 milliampere then this fuse is blown it is a one time business what is done is that at this point ok. Suppose you want to blow this fuse and naturally this this has to source that current uh, there will be some mechanism to source a larger current uh, wherever you are connecting uh, that output is there there will be large current sourcing. So, say you want to blow the fuse what is done is that you give 0 0 here. Now, 
what you do is that take this point and apply a negative voltage maybe say this is grounded so you give kind of minus 5 volt and the supply is 5 volt earlier the potential difference was you know somewhere around 5 volt little less than 5 volt now it will be uh, near around 9 volt because it is a double with some drops uh, you know removed or near to the 10 volt. So the, the current uh, you know flowing through the, uh, the fuse is double that of the normal current that will blow the fuse and it just uh, for a short duration a negative pulse is applied and if you care to see uh, the old time uh, devices there is a pin called VPP that is called the programming uh, voltage V is uh, the voltage P is the programming. So there you apply a negative voltage and then, then you can appropriately choosing the, the, the min term you can blow the fuse rust will be retained but as I said it is a kind of non volatile once you program you cannot reprogram it um, then you get it ok. So that was the basic idea of uh, the, the, the programmable read only memory uh, you can implement a combination circuit essentially you program uh, the truth table and we have seen that it is a fixed AND and it is a programmable OR ok. The AND is fixed by this 2 raised to an AND gauge in the case of N inputs. Um, by blowing or retaining the fuses uh, we are programming 0 or 1. So you can uh, you are able to program the truth table and also uh, like when in the case of multiple outputs multiple like in this case 2 output. Uh, a same min term can be chosen ok. You can share a min term um, between two outputs and uh, it is possible that the, the, the first output may not use that min term uh, the second output may use or both may use but in any case it is possible that a, a single min term can be shared between uh, two output that is possible ok. So that is uh, the idea uh, but um, um, basically there is a problem um, as you go increase the number of inputs say assume that um, uh, in a chip select decoding maybe you have to uh, kind of use uh, say decode 10 address line ok. Uh, suppose there are there was a 16 bit microprocessor uh, then only um, say A15 to A9 need to be or a6 need to be decoded that means 10 address line need to be decoded. Then you will have 10 address line and 2 raised to 10, 1024 locations that means 1024 AND gates ok. Now uh, it is it's really funny if you look at uh, the, the particular application of chip select decoding you are mapping the device to a particular location and many a times it require only one AND gate ok like uh, say all the, uh, the higher address bits are 1 1 or some pattern ok. Many a times you require only one AND gate but you, you have 10 24 AND gates. So these AND gates for many like you know that even if it is a 5 variable uh, normal boolean function you are not going to use 2 raised to 5 min terms ok. If you use all the min terms then the output is 1 always. So um, this is a, an overkill this number of AND gates are overkill. So the question we are asking is that can we reduce the number of AND gates ok. So that was a natural co question people ask. So it all started with um, designers using the PROM as a programmable logic which was not kind of uh, intended function of the PROM um, though it is obvious for us now. That time it was a kind of um, invention or a, a creative use of the PROM. So uh, people felt that um, actually um, there is a lot of wastage of the AND gate in this kind of architecture. So uh, why not why do not we use less number of AND gates. The moment you use less number of AND gates then you should realize that those AND gates we cannot fix the min terms ok. Suppose we say that let us remove these 2 AND gates then what happens is that 
you have only min terms a1 bar a0 bar and a1 bar a0 is available. Uh, then we would not be able to program uh, the XOR function ok. So, the moment you try to reduce the number of AND gates then you should make sure that this AND gates are programmable that means these min terms should be programmable that means you should be instead of two fix, fixed connection uh, with a with an AND gate with two input you should have an AND gate with four input and with maybe fuses connected at the input some kind of programmable mechanism. We will see what is that mechanism, how it is really implemented this is just a kind of logic um, logical schematic not the actual implementation and we will see how this is implemented uh, using transistors okay, we will see that. Uh, but um, essentially it require uh, AND gates with 4 inputs, 4 programmable inputs then we can reduce we can have only uh, using some statistics ok like you study the boolean function of uh, different variables 5 variables 6 variables from practical cases and say uh, in 90 percent of 80 percent of the time uh, for a 5 input um, uh, scenario you do not require more than say say uh, 14 uh, min terms or something like that then you can use only 14 AND gates ok. Now, the moment you introduce the programmability in the AND gate it is even possible there is another advantage that you do not need to kind of stick on with the min terms now you can stick on with the product terms. Okay. So, earlier suppose we had used a1 bar a0 bar and a1 bar a0 ok. So, both min terms were there, but we know that a1 bar a0 or a1 bar sorry a1 bar a0 bar or a1 bar a0 is nothing but a1 bar only. So, it is possible that in such a scenario you can minimize your uh, boolean equation ok and the product term now if, if you have two min terms in the output then what you do is that you only implement a1 bar here that means you uh, there are 4 connections you re retain the a1 bar connection and blow all the other connections ok. So, the moment you have lesser moment we decide we can use lesser number of AND gates we would definitely make these AND gates programmable and at that point we do not need any more uh, we are not working with the min terms we will work with the product terms which will even reduce the requirement of number of AND gates ok. So, that was the next step ok. So, people started building these devices ok from idea taken from this prom that this is too much of an overkill for most application does not require these number of AND gates for chip select decoding it is very few 1 AND gate or 2 AND gates and even in normal boolean um, function the number of AND gates required are less. So, people reduce the number of AND gates but made the AND gates programmable and the moment it is programmable the, the requirement of min terms has vanished and we have come to the product term. So, essentially you uh, kind of minimize your equation and start implementing it that. So, that is what we said we can reduce the AND gate, but the AND gate should be programmable the min terms become the product terms and such a device was called PLA ok the programmable logic array it was called it is called programmable logic array ok I have uh, I am sorry that I have not written that in the, in the previous slide. So, the programmable logic array now uh, somewhere in the lecture I have told uh, do not worry too much about these terminologies I mean do not ask me why it is called programmable logic array uh, I mean just the name it may have some kind of um, um, you know justification by the those who invented it, but we need not worry you know too much about these terminologies uh, because all the more uh, we go to the next step it will be kind of confusing. So, this was the architecture of programmable logic array again we are taking the case of two input case where there are uh, two inputs and its complement. Now, instead of 2 raised to 2 AND gates we have only 2 AND gates and each AND gate has uh, you know the, the 
uh, four inputs uh, the to connect to the two inputs and its complement with a programmability with a fuse you know the with, with some kind of programmability like in the, in our the simplest case you can imagine a fuse and you want to program say a1 bar then you retain this fuse blow all other fuse or you want a1 bar a0 then you retain these two fuse and remove this fuse and naturally you can do the programmable or okay now this become pretty much complicated because if you have multiple outputs um what to program uh, how to program this how to program this because now when you have multiple output it's possible that a single product term can be shared between the output now um we have talked a little bit about the multi output minimization um when we have done an overview of uh, at the beginning of the course and when you have a multi output minimization you have to find basically the common sub expression um in the in the equation and try to implement that okay that is what need to be done here the, the what is common the largest common sub expression should be implemented and that can be shared between these two but you see that this is a little bit of an overkill because there is a lot of programmability now okay now um like you have uh the like, like your programmable and and programmable or okay so summarizing you have a the pla was a programmable and and a programmable or the prom prom was fixed and because all the min terms were there and the programmable or when it comes to programmable logic array you have the programmable and and programmable or we have less than 2 raised to n product terms and um you can share the product terms uh, by output and there is tremendous programming overhead because you have to kind of um um you know program these fuses at the at the input of the and gate and at the output of the and gate and so on lot of programming overhead was there but much more than that much more than that suppose you assume a single output don't worry about multiple output scenario you take just take a single output you are able to program whatever the product term you require the moment you do that there is a less requirement less need for a programmable r uh, or a kind of thing okay because uh, suppose you are trying to program um a, you know x x or y okay or a x or b like a is connected here b is connected here then we will program a bar b here a b bar here there is no need to kind of program this okay so assume there are uh, four and gates okay and um, if somehow you can disable these two and gates then there is no need to kind of uh, you know somehow you make the output of the and gate zero uh, then there is no need for this programmable or um, section we can fix uh, you know make make the connection fix and that will make all the programming overhead reduce so that is the, the that was the next evolution for a single output um you don't need a programmable or because if you have multiple and gates suppose in this case we we have put three and gates and you need only two product terms somehow make the and gate output uh, zero we will see that how to do that then there is no need to have a a programmable or section at the output that was a basic idea and such a device is called programmable array logic okay now this was programmable logic array and this was programmable array logic and there is as i said don't worry too much about the name okay one is called pla and another is called pal i know so it's it's kind of um, programmable logic but uh, since earlier was one was called pla this was called pal and now i will kind of uh, kind of use a shorthand for representing um the and gate so let us come to pla now onwards it's very difficult like uh, when we are going to see some practical devices which has lot of inputs now in a picture if there are say 10 inputs then we will have 20 vertical lines and it's very difficult to show and gate with all the 20 connection so now what we are going to 
in the, in the next slide onwards when we have a 4 input AND gate we will only show a single line going like that. Assume that there is programmability at the cross point ok. So, we are going to show so like this you have an AND gate um, a single line assume that there is is a programmability I mean assume that this is a 4 input AND gate ok that is the best way to do that. We will see how it is implemented as I said. So, we have a shorthand representation of a 4 input, four input AND gate with with programmability at uh, all these inputs ok. So, this is the, uh, the kind of architecture of programmable array logic wherein you have some fixed number of programmable AND, AND gates. In this case there are 3 AND gates which is permanently connected to an OR gate ok. So, when you take this output you can program you can implement uh, a boolean function of 2 variables up to 3 product terms ok up to like you have only one product term that will be programmed in the first AND gate and somehow we make sure that this AND gates and this AND gates are disabled ok. We will see that how, how to do that very very um, a simple and elegant way. So, this is the architecture of uh, programmable array logic wherein uh, the AND gates are programmable but the number of AND gates are fixed the OR gate is fixed that means if we if we have 3 AND gates which is connected to an OR gate permanently and you get an output and maybe like in a real device there could be variation like it is not that all the outputs are kind of um, uh, consist of 3 product terms maybe there are some output which consists of only 2 product terms and things like that ok. So, that is how and this is the basic architect architecture of a PLD or programmable logic devices ok. The PAL is the real architecture of the programmable logic devices and we were talking about the evolution and um, the real kind of logical reasoning behind how this has evolved ok. So, though we are not using any of those very much uh, definitely we are not using the PROM and uh, the PLAs and the PALs are used but then it is it is a worthwhile academic exercise how this is evolved and why uh, such an evolution happened ok. Uh, to, to, to understand that will help in some other uh, logic design I hope. So, the PAL is programmable AND and fixed OR. So, we started with a programmable fixed AND and a programmable OR we have come to both programmable then we have kind of inverted it. It was uh, from a fixed AND programmable OR we have ended up with a programmable AND fixed OR for all the reason we have stated. So, here you have uh, for an N input you have 2 raised to less than 2 raised to N product terms. Um, each uh, AND gate of the product term has 2 N inputs to be able to program any min term or a product term. You have a dedicated product term for output and for a particular output uh, the product terms are fixed ok that is architecture of the PAL. So, this is the evolution we have started with uh, the PROM which is programmable read only memory which had uh, basically a real memory where the address decoder acts as a, a min terms of the boolean function fixed AND. So, N input you have 2 raised to N AND gates each AND gate has fixed connection to the N lines. Then a programmable OR basically it works as programming the location um, with truth table and in a PROM that is implemented uh, that programmability is implemented through the fuses which we blow by blowing uh, you know flowing a large current and diodes are uh, kind of kind of um, in series not kind of a cross drive from the VCC to the ground. The next one was that this AND was an overkill because in a chip select decoding very few AND gates are used only one AND gate is used even in real boolean function the number of um, the product term min terms are less. So, we reduce the number of AND gates, but then it necessitated um, to make it programmable 
that means increasing the number of inputs to 2 n and which is programmable and that enable uh, not only the min terms the product terms which was much more kind of use it, it allowed to reduce the number of uh, the AND gates because the moment you talk about the product term we are talking about minimized impl implementation uh, the Boolean equation is minimized to get the product terms that is implemented and the programmable or lot of overhead because of programmable or again for a single output. Uh, we said that this programmable law does not make sense because we program whatever the product terms we require and disable the AND gates that automatically implement the programmable law. So, it was possible to kind of fix the OR and by playing with the AND gates um, disabling the AND gates uh, we could get that programmability in the, in the kind of um, in the present day language we can say we can get a virtual programmable OR or something like that. So, uh, that prompted this particular architecture the, the PAL which has a programmable AND section and a fixed OR section ok. Now, so that is what we have um, is about the, the, the idea of um, this PAL has come from using memory as a programmable logic um, because of non volatility the PROM was used and which was a fixed AND programmable OR number of AND gates used were less. So, we may reduce uh, the number of AND gates making it programmable which enable uh, to program the product terms and that was called PLA and uh, for a single output again the moment the AND gates were programmable, programmable OR was not very much necessary. So, that was prompted uh, the architecture of the, the PAL which is nothing but programmable AND and fixed OR. So, let us turn now to some real devices. The first device ok again the bit of a history because nobody use nobody makes this PAL 16L8 anymore. But if I remember if I can recollect uh, this was one of the devices which came into, um, uh, into the existence or people design. 16L8 and uh, the then the AMD uh, used to make this um, particular device Texas Instrument. This particular uh, architect the diagram is from the Texas Instruments uh, old data sheet ok. So, uh, that shows uh, the internal of the device I mean do not be kind of um, kind of alarmed by the number of lines it is very simple. So, I hope you can kind of it is visible. So, uh, take this input you know the, this was a 20 pin dual inline package dip package um, which in today's standard was very huge but hardly uh, implemented very low density logic function ok. So, uh, uh, take this input this was an input you see this is this one is coming is going through uh, directly through a buffer and through an inverter that shows a buffer and inverter together and two lines. So, instead of showing it here to save space it is shown on the side. So, this, uh, this line number uh, 3 uh, like 2 and 3 are the complement and the, uh, the particular line of 1, 1 and 1 bar is these two. So, you have another input 2. So, this that line 2 and the input is here. So, these lines are nothing but the inputs are its complements and so you have a dedicated input 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and this, this particular one. So, there are 10 dedicated inputs. So, you can up to 20 say 0 to 19 up to here is the 10 inputs and its complement ok. Uh, maybe that some connection may be kind of uh, the you can see these two connections are here, but I am just telling the number of lines. The 20 lines are for 10 dedicated inputs and its complement. And uh, these AND gates now you take one of the AND gate here, uh, this has connection to all the inputs with which is programmable with, with some kind of programmability at this junction, ok. So, uh, now uh, if you see there are 0 to 31. So, there are 32 vertical lines that 
uh, that kind of uh, tells us that there are 16 inputs and its complement okay. Now we have located the, the, the 10 inputs so where does that uh, additional 6 input come. So look at this maybe look at this structure we will come to 6 uh, additional input. So here you see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 AND gates permanently connected to an OR gate which is going through a tri-state inverter and it is available as an output okay. And the tri-state inverters enabled is controlled by another AND gate we can call it say control AND gate okay. That means if this AND gate output is high this output is available if it is low it is tri stated okay. But so this is a dedicated output which can be enabled or cut off. Similarly come that is pin 19 and pin 12 is also a dedicated output. So there are if you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 output. So that is what is shown here 8 output. But and the top one and the bottom one are kind of dedicated outputs. And look at this section 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You see that it is when you enable this tri state gate, it act as an output, but if you cut it off, then this act as an input, okay. So, along with 10 dedicated inputs, we have 6 IOs, okay, which can be which can be used as output or input. So, this now allows. Uh, this IO pin to be used as input also okay. So in addition to 10 dedicated inputs you have 6 uh, IOs which can be used as input. So there are uh, maximum possible number of input is 10 plus 6. So you have 16 inputs and it is complement. Uh, so there are 32 vertical lines that is how the 32 lines come. So now you imagine this each AND gate has 32 inputs with programmability. So you can choose any of the 16 inputs or its complement uh, to form a product term or a min term or whatever you call okay. So and in one section you can have up to 7 product terms okay up to 7 suppose you can use 3 of them um, or you can leave the 4 unused okay. We will we will quickly see how it is kind of um, to be able I mean how can you disable AND gates okay. We will see that we will in a moment I will tell you. So now um, you look at this output uh, kind of um, uh, this dedicated output there is hardly any reason for a tri state gate. So most of the time uh, this need to be permanently enabled unless you connect to some kind of a data bus where it is tri stated or a you know shared bus or something like that. So how to permanently enable it? So the idea is that basically this is you cannot like you have, you have studied the gates and um, it is a bit ridiculous to think of a um, kind of 16 input 32 input AND gates okay. So definitely this is a wired AND gate okay it is a single line and I hope you have studied wired AND or wired NOR we will see that you know we will I will show you how it is really implemented. But do not worry this is not like a conventional um, kind of TTL circuit with uh, 32 input or a, not even a conventional CMOS um, AND gate with 32 input it is a it is a wired uh, and or wired or we, we will see that okay. So now assume that this is a wired gate with a single line with a uh, resistance pulled up to the VDD or VCC okay. Now what you do is that uh, to permanently make the output of the AND gate 1 you blow all the connections you do not you do not you know remove all the connections then this input is pulled up and since the input all the inputs are 1 the output will be 1 it is permanently enabled okay. So that is how um, the AND gate is permanently enabled okay. But there is a, a need suppose we have 7 product terms here 
in a particular for a particular boolean function we need only kind of 6 uh, uh, product terms and we need to kind of disable this AND gate ok. Now how to do that is very simple ok. You know that uh, A and A bar is 0 the, the same principle is applied here what you do is that do not uh, prog do any programming on this input retain all the connections ok all 32 connections are retained. Now assume there has to be for um, uh, some function at least one input has to be there. So even if there is one input say A is connected here B is connected here. So for, for a particular this AND gate A and A bar is connected to an input. So irrespective of the input is 0 or 1 this AND gate output will be um, 0 always and that is disabled ok. So you want to use only 3 AND gates no problem rest of the 4 AND gates you retain all the connection do not do any programming then those output are disabled automatically we are doing the programming of the OR ok. By programming the AND gate 0 output 0 we are implementing the programmable OR functionality. So that is the basic idea of um, how to manage if the number of product terms are less ok uh, that is how it is managed. So now what we do is that um, to understand it a little more better ok. So essentially it was you know you, it was a kind of uh, general purpose programmable device where you connect various input it really does not matter where you connect and that, that was the first time you know something of this uh, was happening like you, you could connect the input lines anywhere. So depending on your PCB design you could say it was not convenient to bring A here maybe it was convenient to bring A here it does not matter you connect it there because you could program it appropriately. So you, you could connect the various inputs here various output and depending on your need you program the, the number of AND gates and the product terms ok. That is that was what the basic idea it, it works as a combination circuit and we will see uh, how this is used as a uh, the devices which was meant for sequential circuit data path and though uh, we can kind of uh, seriously use uh, these kind of simple PLDs for uh, great uh, you know the data path and things like that that was not possible. But still um, you know compared to earlier uh, at that time the discrete gates this was a major leap major uh, programmability uh, to, to that extent the studying this is a very good idea. So now let us come back to the slide let us take this kind of say a part of it maybe we will take this first three section a little bit magnified uh, to understand it better ok. So that is what is shown uh, the inputs like 1, 2, 3, 4 inputs ok and 3 output section ok. And now uh, this is a dedicated output ok and which, which we can use it as only as an output definitely this can be kind of um, uh, cut off if it was a connected to a shared bus it was possible to cut off by this control AND gate that can you can permanently cut it off or you can a product term can control it ok. So that was a possibility here but um, take this, this section which is much more interesting um, as I said say uh, this is is an output and mind you there is a, um, a this is a tri state inverter ok and this was an active low uh, kind of uh, circuit and that is how this L comes in the picture uh, say PAL 16 L8 ok. You might wonder suppose you have a boolean function y is uh, you know sum of some product term. Um, then uh, you implement if you directly implement that product term here then what happens is that you will get the y bar instead of y ok that was an issue. But it is very easy suppose you have um, y to be implemented then you apply De Morgan theorem you say y bar then you apply the De Morgan theorem uh, convert 
that into to equal and y bar product terms and you implement it then you will you are implementing y bar at this and or gate. So, which is inverted by this inverter then you get the y you know that is how uh, this was used okay. So, uh, this inverter itself is not a problem because the complement of that was taken and was implemented by uh, the tools and maybe we are um, this structure though it is like this kind of uh, output combined with the input uh, though it is a very you know it is a very kind of very simple uh, looking uh, structure but it has many use you know it is really really um, kind of very elegant um, uh, design uh, though it looks very simple it has lot of lot of advantages this particular connection this one connection we will soon see maybe we are coming to the end of this um, uh, lecture. So, I will kind of uh, wind up here because we do not have time to, to kind of go through that. So, in the next lecture we will go through it, but um, what we have seen is a, a kind of commercial uh, device then used now it is not available which called PAL 16 L8 with 16 kind of 10 dedicated inputs 6 IOs. So, the maximum number of inputs were 16. So, there are 32 lines vertical lines or 32 inputs 16 inputs and it is complement and there are um, 2 dedicated outputs each OR gate has 7 programmable AND gates each AND gate has you know 32 inputs which is which can be connected to 16 inputs or it is complements. Then there is a tri state gate at the output of the, the OR gate tri state inverter. The enable is controlled by another gate, and we also have seen how to permanently enable that. And uh, there were 7 product terms going to an AND gate, and we have seen suppose you need only 3 AND gates, 3 product terms, how to disable uh, 4 product terms by retaining all the connections which bring in the programmable OR facility in the, pro the, the programmable AND itself. And uh, we will we will see a little more in detail uh, that IO section of the 16L8 uh, which is very elegant. And then we will move on to some kind of devices with flip flop which allows you to implement uh, data path and sequential circuit. Um, then pretty much we can move to the uh, at least one device which is probably available even now uh, which can be used in simple PLDs. Then we will move on to the complex PLD. So, as I said though it is not useful directly uh, this will enable us to understand the CPLDs which are uh, which have some use today. Um, uh, we will be able to understand the architecture of it very nicely if you understand this. So, please revise what we have done today and I wish you all the best. <laughs>